What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today we're gonna talk about Destiny 2 on the PC. One of the big themes coming out of the reveal event in Los Angeles last week was, wow, Destiny 2 looks fantastic on the PC. It looks great, it runs great, it's super smooth, runs at 60 frames per second, absolutely stunned. Everybody who walked away from that just said, wow, it looks amazing. And that's got a lot of people wondering. How much would it cost to build a PC capable of running Destiny 2? So what we're going to do is make some assumptions here. Uh, we did get a chance to see the PCs uh, that were running Destiny 2 at the reveal. Unfortunately, nobody that I could find took a really good picture of any of them. Uh, they were out for display. You could see them. So we've got to make some assumptions about what these PCs actually were. Uh, what we're going to assume here is that this is a GTX 1080 Ti, which is a very expensive graphics card. It's brand new. And we're also going to assume that the processor, which is water cooled is an I seven 7,700 K, uh, in up, Past that, we're just not sure. So we're going to have to make some assumptions. Uh, we also know what monitor we're looking at, obviously. So this is a very high-end and expensive build. The build we played at, at the event was running at 4K. It's rumored to be at medium settings, and it was buttery smooth at 60 frames per second. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the build that we assume that was running on. Next... After that, we're also going to take a look at a much more budget-oriented build. We're going to look at something that we think will be capable of running Destiny 2 at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Obviously, we don't know the minimum specs required for Destiny 2. I don't even know if Bungie knows that yet. That may come a lot later in the development cycle once it's been completely optimized for PC. But we're going to take a shot in the dark just to get some prices in our head. So if you are committed to uh, t switch it over to PC for Destiny 2 based on the buzz that you heard coming out of the event, or you're just curious how much would a PC cost capable of running Destiny 2, then this is the video for you. So we're going to start off by looking at the super high-end build. This is the build uh, that... I think is most closely related to the one that they actually had Destiny 2 running on at the event. And it's a very high-end build. It's got a Core i7-7700K processor, which is absolutely top of the line for video games right now. If you want the absolute best frame rate, single core performance, this is your Huckleberry. And then it's water-cooled. The computers that they had run in there were water-cooled. I believe it was actually this water cooler, which is about $130. Um, so it very well could be overclocked up to about five gigahertz, which is very, very fast. Um, now I want to warn you guys, this build is extraordinarily expensive to best represent what we saw at the reveal. I came up with a price range of nearly $3,500. This is going to be past $3,500 once you add in tax and, uh, maybe shipping and stuff like that. But what you get here is an absolute top-of-the-line gaming PC. Again, we have the top-of-the-line Intel uh, i7 processor. This is the brand new one. We got a Corsair liquid cooler. Uh, we got an MSI Z270 gaming uh, motherboard. A Corsair Vengeance, 16 gigs of RAM running at 3,000 megahertz. Uh, we also have a solid-state drive, a one terabyte solid-state drive. I actually... I didn't even put any uh, hard drives on this because I figured one terabyte is probably enough for most people who are just gaming. Um, if you want some extra storage, you could definitely add a solid or a regular hard drive to this as well, which aren't that expensive, honestly. And then, of course, one of the biggest costs we have, $738 for an MSI GeForce GTX 1080 Ti video card. These are very expensive right now. They're brand new. I think they were introduced last month uh, and absolutely stunningly expensive, but very, very quick and very, very powerful. I went with the uh, Fantex Enthu Evolve ATX glass ATX mid tower case. It's a $200. It's about $200 for this. Um, but I got to say, it looks absolutely stunning. If you're going to build a $3,000 or a $3,500 um, PC, you might as well get something to make it look nice. I mean, it's a very cool looking, uh, very cool looking 
case, in my opinion. It comes in silver as well. I really like that. And a power supply is about $100. Uh, Windows, I put Windows in here for about $90. You can get a Windows license for as little as $20 or $30 if you shop around a little bit on the internet. Uh, and then another huge cost, even bigger than the memory card, or the memory, or the video card, is the monitor that they had displayed. This is an Acer Predator monitor. Uh, it's a 4K 60 hertz monitor uh, that also has G-Sync. If you don't know, if you're new to PC gaming, G-Sync is a way of syncing the output of the video card to the input of the monitor. So you never get any frame tear tearing at all. Uh, it always looks perfectly smooth uh, and also doesn't introduce any input lag that you'd get from using something like V-Sync. So it's an expensive technology and it's an expensive monitor. Um, and you can certainly buy a cheaper monitor. In fact, I wouldn't buy this monitor right now, in all honesty. Uh, there's no way because 4K monitors, we're going to see them over the next six months. We're going to see um, HDR introduced into 4K desktop monitors. We're going to see faster frame rates, faster hertz there. 75 hertz, 120 hertz, 144 hertz. Uh, so I wouldn't actually buy this right now. I just put this here for pricing purposes. Obviously, it knocks it down $1,300. So you're more in the $2,100 range if you already have a monitor. Um, and that becomes slightly more affordable. But I definitely, this was the monitor that they had at the event. And it looked fantastic. It looked spectacular. I just wouldn't buy it right now uh, because that technology is really evolving very quickly. And it just doesn't seem doesn't seem very prudent to invest in a 4K monitor right now for gaming purposes. Uh, now, that's a lot of money. That's $3,500 or about $2,100 without the monitor. That's out of reach for a lot of people. Uh, if you do want like the ultimate gaming PC, the ultimate gaming desktop PC right now, this is basically the build you're looking at. And, uh, you know, start saving those pennies, start mowing those lawns. Uh, get out there, start working some overtime because this thing is not cheap. But if you want to play at 1080p, you're looking at a completely different pricing structure. And it's something that's much more in line with consoles. You can see here, it's about $639 with a gaming monitor here. Uh, so you can actually get down to about $500 if you don't, if you already have a 1080p monitor, uh, and you don't want to uh, purchase one. Now, this build doesn't, I didn't include Windows into this build. I'm just going to assume that you're going to go out and pay $20 or $30 for a copy of Windows. But you got to add that to the price of the build. And what you're going to see here is a much lower end spec, but it should run Destiny 2 at 1080p. And I'm basing that off of benchmarks of other similar games that have huge open worlds. I use Witcher 3 a lot uh, to kind of figure out if this build could run uh, 60 frames per second because Witcher 3 is a very demanding game. It's got an open world. And this, this build, I do believe, will be capable of running Destiny 2. Don't go out and buy it. Obviously, wait until the very last minute. If you're planning on buying Destiny 2 for the PC, do you want to build a PC, a low-end PC for Destiny 2? Wait till the last possible minute. What the point of this video is, is just to kind of get a price in your head. So if you do want to play on PC and you want to start saving money or you want to start pl financially planning how much you want to spend on a PC for Destiny 2, this is the low end. And obviously, if you have a monitor already, a 1080p monitor already, which most people do have at this point, you can delete this cost. Now, this build is an Intel Pentium. It's not even an i3, i5, i7. Uh, it's only $60, which is an insane value for this thing. It runs at 3.5 gigahertz, which is super fast. It's a dual core processor. Um, but what you're really concerned about is single thread performance in most video games. And that's why this thing really excels. It's very good price to performance wise. So for $60, you get a pretty damn good gaming processor. This thing isn't going to, you're not going to want to render videos. You're not going to want to be streaming with this. This is just for video games. Uh, next, we went with a nice cheap motherboard. Uh, we went with a uh, 270 motherboard. There are cheaper motherboards. You can get down to the $40 range, but you have to go with the older generation 170 motherboard, 
which can represent some incompatibility issues. So just to be safe, I went almost $80 for a more expensive, newer motherboard, which hopefully will reduce the amount of headaches you have when you're actually building this thing. For memory, we went real basic here, eight gigs of memory, DDR2133. It's not the most memory, it's not the fastest memory, but it's $54 and it ought to get the job done. Uh, and now, one thing I did spend a little bit of money on in this build uh, that you might not find necessary is a solid state drive. For $83, it's a 240 gigabyte solid state drive. The reason I did this is because once you experience computing on a solid state drive, you really don't want to go back to a spinning disk drive. Uh, they are just so much slower and so aggravating uh, that you just you just don't want to be there anymore. So even though you can get a spinning disk drive for much lower than $83, I almost find a solid state drive to be mandatory. And you can get less gigabytes, you can get less capacity uh, than 240 gig gigabytes, but 240 gigabytes, I would say, is about the minimum that you want to, if you're buying a new PC or building a new PC, I really wouldn't recommend going. You can get as low as 120. You can even get as low as like 64 gigabytes. But that's just not going to be enough for you. You know, once you once you start loading programs onto this and the operating system, uh, you're just gonna you're gonna find you run out of space really fast. And even with the 240 gigabytes, um, once you can afford it, I would definitely add a spinning disk drive uh, for storage purposes, for pictures, for music, for you know videos, whatever you want to put on this computer. You're not gonna want to fill up your solid state drive with that stuff. You're gonna want to get a spinning disk drive. All right, next up, the MSI Radeon RX 570 4 gigabyte armor card. This is $175. This, I believe, is going to be about the lowest you can go for a video card to get 1080p at 60 frames per second. And in all honesty, you're not going to be playing ultra most of the time. You're going to be playing on medium settings or low settings. Video cards are very expensive. Uh, you can definitely get a cheaper video card than this. You can get uh, RX, I think uh, the 560 is more like $100, uh, which is a very new card. But I really want to build this machine with 1080p 60 at its heart. And I don't think that we're looking at a an ultra settings build here. We're looking at a budget build 1080p, 60, low or medium settings, which is still going to look great. It's still going to play great. Uh, but again, I kind of use The Witcher, even though The Witcher isn't a shooter. Uh, it's got like this broad open world. It's a very demanding video game. Uh, and this, I believe, was about the minimum that you're going to be able to do to get 60 frames per second. And that's our goal here. 1080p, 60 frames per second. I also went with a very cheap case here, uh, $38 for a thermal take case. Very high high reviews. Doesn't look all that great. Uh, it's just a very basic, normal case. Uh, but let's let's just take budget into concern here. Uh, same goes with the power supply. Uh, this is a well regarded, uh, decent power supply. It doesn't have any of the fancy features like removable cables or you know blacked out braided sleeved cables. Uh, but it's got the power that you need. Uh, it's got a fairly good rating as far as uh, efficiency goes, and uh, it should get the job done. Uh, and then, of course, I did put a 75 hertz monitor on here, 1920 by 1080p. Now, why did I select this monitor? Because it's got FreeSync. If you're not familiar with FreeSync, it works very much in the same way that uh, G-Sync works, but this is AMD's kind of competing technology. And the nice thing about AMD's technology is that it's much, much cheaper. It's a software-based solution as a pair, as a, 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 instead of a hardware-based solution. So it doesn't cost as much uh, to implement. So paired with the Radeon video card, uh, this should give you a very smooth experience uh, without any screen tearing uh, and look quite good. So this whole build is $640. Of course, if you already have a 1080p monitor and you're not concerned with FreeSync, if you want to use VSync, for instance, uh, you can certainly take $120 off of it, and then you're really in the range of $500. And what 
what's interesting about this is that it really comes in about at the projected price range of something like an Xbox Scorpio and about $100 more than a PS4 Pro. You're not going to be running 4K on this thing. You could probably run 4K, but it's going to be at, you know, 15 frames per second. It's going to it's not going to be a, a good playable experience. What this build is all about is being cheap and being capable of 1080p 60 frames per second. Uh again, not at ultra settings probably. Now, again, I'm going to reiterate. Don't go out and buy this build. Don't 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 take this build as gospel. This is purely for kind of a pricing experiment exercise. You know, I just wanted to take a look at how much it would cost for a decently capable 1080p 60 frames per second capable computer. Uh, and this is about what I came up with. It's about $500. Um, of course, you can cheap out a little bit more on the drive. You can get that down to about 40 bucks, but you're not going to get that solid state. And I really recommend uh, getting a solid state drive. Uh, there's just so much faster. It's such an improvement. Your games load faster. Your operating system loads faster. Everything loads faster. It's just a much more pleasant experience. You can also go cheaper on the graphics card, but the cheaper you go below that 570, I think you're really going to start having trouble maintaining 60 frames per second in any game, uh, even at 1080p. You may have to go down to something like 20, uh, 720p. Uh, so that's the build. Uh, the i7 build is about $3,500, uh, including a $1,300 monitor, which is really expensive and I wouldn't recommend at this point. Um, now, one other note about the high-end build that I thought was worth uh, talking about is if you are a content creator or if you want to stream and play the game on one PC, wouldn't go with this Intel Core i7 processor. I'd actually go with a Ryzen build. Uh, so Ryzen recently introduced a set of new processors that are actually cheaper than the i7 processors have eight cores with hyper threading. So you get 16 simulated cores uh, and are very good for rendering videos, for streaming. You're just gonna get better quality for streaming and faster renders if you go with an AMD Ryzen. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit cheaper than the i7 build as well. You can see that you can get a 1700, uh, three gigahertz, eight core processor for less money than a 4.2, quad core processor from Intel. So if you are a content creator, I would definitely start looking at these AMD Ryzen builds. It's a lot cheaper than getting into the eight core stuff from Intel. Um, and you're not losing a whole lot of performance. You're just saving a whole lot of money. Like we're talking 700 or more dollars uh, compared to equivalent processors from Intel right now. And again, you'd want to water cool that and uh, you'd have to get a, a uh, motherboard as well. Um, but yeah, uh, these are the builds that I'm kind of looking at. I'm actually looking at building one of these Ryzen builds for myself for a second computer. I have a uh, a pretty equivalent build to this. I don't have the 1080 Ti. Uh, personally, I have the 1080 and I don't have the i7-7700. I have the, I think it's called the 6700K, which is like last year's model of the i7 processor. Uh, so. I feel like I'm sitting okay as far as gaming goes, uh, but for streaming, I wouldn't mind grabbing a uh, second computer here and building that out. And I think it would be actually relatively affordable with this AMD stuff. Um, so that's gonna wrap this one up. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you guys thinking about building the new PC to play Destiny 2 on? Or are you gonna stick with console? Uh, for me, my recommendation would be to stick with where your friends are at. Your friends list is what makes Destiny so fun, in my opinion. Uh, so if all your friends are on the Xbox, that's where I would play Destiny 2. If all your friends are on the PlayStation, that's where I would play Destiny 2. If you got a lot of friends that have been on the fence, but they didn't want to buy a PlayStation or an Xbox because they're PC gamers primarily, then you may want to invest in getting a, a PC to play with those friends. So... Interesting time to be a Destiny player. Uh, I got to say, Destiny looks fantastic on the PC. It really does. I don't know if it's $3,600 worth of awesome, but it's probably five to $600 worth of awesome. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.